Welcome to LG Ministry. We're glad you have chosen to watch our program. My name is Coogan Collins, and I'm the minister at the Long Grove Church of Christ. Our hope and desire is that you will open up your Bible and study along with us. Be sure to check out all of our lessons on YouTube. Now let's get to our lesson. I'm starting a new series called Soldiers of the Cross. Whether you realize it or not, when you obey the gospel and become a Christian, you also become a soldier of Christ and you are in His army. You should be ready to fight and defend the truth and continue to battle against the evil way. There are many similarities between being in the Lord's army and being in an earthly army. An earthly army will usually have a banner, captain, and a temporary camping place. We also have these same three things in the Lord's army. First, consider the banner. For many armies, this might be a flag or something similar. But the Christian soldier doesn't have a physical banner like a flag. Instead, we have a spiritual banner that holds us to a higher standard. This is how the word banner is used in the Old Testament. For example, Isaiah tells us what God will do for His people in Isaiah 11 verse 12. He will set up a banner for the nations. It will assemble the outcast of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. God was going to set the standard for the nations. And we have been given a higher standard to follow as Christians, and those standards come from God's Word. While our banner is spiritual, we can know everything about our banner by studying our Bibles. It's not uncommon in war for an army to put a lot of emphasis on its banner. For example, if someone is carrying a flag and they were shot, another person would come along and pick up that flag and can continue to march on because it stands as a symbol for their nation. We must do the same in the Lord's army. We must have soldiers who are willing to put the banner first and are willing to pick it up and to defend the banner by using God's Word. As soon as you stop believing in God's higher standard, you will lose your drive and your focus, and you will be defeated by the enemy. Many armies will also have a captain. This is a person who the soldiers look up to and listen to. The captain has the experience and the knowledge of how to defeat the enemy, and if you're going to be successful, you must trust your captain and follow his orders. Well, in the same way, we are to do this in the Lord's army because Jesus is our captain as expressed by Hebrews 2 and verse 10. For it was fitting for him for whom are all things and by whom are all things and bringing many sons to glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. As Christian soldiers, we must put our trust in Jesus and listen to what he has to say in his word. Jesus knows all about the devil and how to deal with him and to put him in his place. So if we want to be successful in the Lord's army, we must obey our captain or we will end up finding ourselves not being able to defeat him. In most armies, the soldier never has a place to call his permanent home because most armies establish a temporary residence wherever they go. When it comes to fighting in the battlefield, the soldiers will live out in tents. And at a moment's notice, they may have to pack up and move to a new location. Christian soldiers are the same way because no matter where you are living on this earth right now, it is nothing more than a temporary home. Even if we live in the same place for 40 years, we are just camping out because our permanent home that will last for eternity is found in heaven. This principle is taught in Hebrews 11, starting at verse 13. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, were assured of them, embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For those who say such things declare plainly that they seek a homeland. 
And truly, if they had called to mind that country from which they had come out, they would have had opportunity to return. But now they desire a better, that is, a heavenly country. Therefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for He has prepared a city for them. Hebrews 13 verse 14 For here we have no continuing city, but we seek the one to come. Now that we have examined some similarities between the Lord's army and other earthly armies, let's examine some of the similarities between the duties of a soldier that belongs to an earthly army and the duties of a soldier that belongs to the Lord's army. One of the duties of a soldier is for them to continue to move forward no matter what's going on around them. Bullets may be flying by, things may be blowing up, but they press on so they can advance on the enemy. The same thing is true for the Christian soldiers. We must keep moving forward in our battle against the devil and sin. We must never stop putting one foot in front of the other because if we do, the temptations of life will start gaining power and they may overcome us and cause us to sin. I like the example that we learn from the time of Moses. Moses and the children of Israel appeared to be trapped at the edge of the sea and Pharaoh and his men were coming after them. And Moses said in Exodus 14, verse 13, Do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which He will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. The Lord will fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. While God was on their side and would help them, He did not want them to just sit there and do nothing, because notice what it says next in verse 15. And the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward. But lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And I indeed will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them. So I will gain honor over Pharaoh and over all his army, his chariots and his horsemen. Then the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, when I have gained honor for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots, and his horsemen. God wanted his people to move forward and to keep moving. And that is exactly what you and I must do. We cannot allow the distractions of this world or the sorrows we may endure to keep us from moving forward because we have a battle to win and our souls are on the line. We need to have the attitude of Paul who said in Philippians 3 verse 14, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us as many as are mature have this mind. Hope all of you will examine yourself in this area so you can see if you are moving forward spiritually. If you are not moving forward, start doing so today. Another important duty of a soldier is to encourage others to enlist because the more soldiers you have, the stronger your army will be, which will give you a stronger front and give you more opportunities to advance on your enemy. In fact, sometimes the best recruits may come from your enemy's side. We can certainly see this when it comes to Christianity because all of our soldiers that we enlist come from the enemy's side because all accountable people are sinners until they become Christian soldiers. I can't think of a better example than Saul of Tarsus, but his case was a little different because he thought he was a soldier for God, and he thought his battle against Christians was the right thing to do. But of course, it was not, which is why he said this later in Acts 26 verse 9, Indeed, I myself thought I must do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth. This I also did in Jerusalem, and many of the saints I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priest. And when they were put to death, I cast my vote against them, and I punished them often in every synagogue, and compelled them to blaspheme. And being exceedingly enraged against them, I persecuted them even to foreign cities. Philippians 3 verse 7. But what things were gained to me, these I have counted lost for Christ. Yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish, that I may gain Christ and be found in Him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. 
that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering, being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. At first, Saul was doing the work of the devil when he thought he was doing the work of God. But once he was enlisted into the Lord's army, he took his great zeal that he had used to fight against God's people, and he started fighting back against the enemy. And he became one of the hardest working apostles for the Lord. So it is our Christian duty to enlist as many people as we can in the Lord's army from our enemy side. Because not only does it increase the number of soldiers in the Lord's army, you may be the person that enlists a man like Saul who has the potential to make a huge difference in our battle against the evil way. But the question becomes, are you fulfilling your duty as a Christian so soldier in this area by inviting people to church or by telling people about Jesus? If not, I hope you'll start today. Another important duty of a soldier is for him to obey what he's told to do. If they are told to climb a mountain and dig a 15 feet deep hole with their shovel, they must obey without question. If a soldier fails to obey his orders, many times it costs others their lives. The same thing is important for the Christian soldier. We must obey our Lord's commands because our souls are on the line. and We don't want to lose to our enemy. If we fail to obey the orders given to us by Jesus, it can cause others to stumble and cost them their souls. Hebrews 5 verse number 8, Though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. And having been perfected, he became the author of eternal salvation to all who obey him. The Hebrew writer makes it clear, If we want to have salvation, then we must obey the author of salvation, which is Jesus. He's not asking us to do anything he wouldn't do. He obeyed the Father's will perfectly while he lived on the earth, and he wants us to strive to do the same. Sometimes we may find it difficult to obey God's word, especially when it comes to things that can affect us personally, such as marriage, divorce, and remarriage, or for some it might be the fact that the Bible teaches that homosexuality is a sin. However, if we are going to be faithful soldiers of Christ, we must obey His commands no matter how hard it may be and no matter what personal sacrifices we have to make. The apostles are a great example of this because it would have been easy for them to be silent and not speak about Jesus in public like the Sanhedrin council wanted them to. But they wanted to put God first no matter what the cost. And when they were asked why they disobeyed the orders of the Sanhedrin council, they said this in Acts 5 verse 29, We ought to obey God rather than men. What kind of soldier have you been in this area? Have you been obedient even when it hurts to do the right thing? Or have you found yourself doubting and being disobedient? If you have been doubting and have been disobedient, I hope you will realize that God's wisdom surpasses all understanding and that we must trust in His judgment no matter what the situation is because He is always right and we are wrong. Let us never forget that God only wants the best for us. If we continue to be disobedient, we're going to find ourselves fighting for the wrong side, and we will lose the battle and our souls to the devil if we do not change our ways. Another duty of a soldier is to endure hardship. When soldiers are fighting for their country, sometimes they have to endure extreme weather conditions, exhaustion, and hunger. Some of them press on even though they have been injured because they are willing to endure so the country might win. Christian soldiers should be willing to do the same. As Paul said in first, or 2 Timothy 2 and verse number 3, You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaging in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. When you live the Christian life, there are going to be times when you have to be willing to endure and fight the good fight of faith. The old devil wants you to give up and yield to your temptations, but you must not listen to him, and you must not listen to the world. Instead, you should focus your attention on being pleasing to your captain, Jesus Christ. As James said, James 1 verse 12, Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Another area where we must endure and contend with is our past failures. 
Again, the devil would love for you to start thinking about your past failures because if you start dwelling on the past, you will not move forward, which is why Paul said in Philippians 3 verse 13, Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upper call of God in Christ Jesus. How about you? Are you willing to endure the hardships of life for the sake of your soul? Are you willing to do what it takes so that you can receive the crown of life that God offers every faithful Christian in heaven? If you don't endure, then the devil has you right where he wants you. So I hope you'll start enduring today. Another duty of a soldier is to be strong and courageous. When men and women train to be soldiers, they have to go through rigorous training so they will have the strength to press on. And the army does everything it can to instill courage in their soldiers because when strength and courage are combined, you will have a soldier who will give his all for his country. Christian soldiers are supposed to be the same. We should all be training and working so that we can be spiritually strong and courageous. As Paul said in Ephesians 6 and verse 11, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Now, the stronger we become spiritually at handling God's Word, the more courageous we will be. God's Word is called the sword of the Spirit. But if we don't train with that sword and learn how to use it, we might as well go to battle with a butter knife. We must stop neglecting studying God's Word. We must stop being cowards when it comes to telling people about Jesus and what His Word says. We should always do our best to aim for people's hearts so that they might be pricked by the truth. We need to take the advice of God that He gave to Joshua in Joshua 1 verse 7. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. As soldiers in the Lord's army, we must learn to be strong and courageous for the Lord by keeping His commands and not turning to the left or to the right. And we need to say, The Lord is my helper. I will not fear what can man do to me. Hebrews 13 verse 6. If you are struggling in these areas of your life, pray to God for strength and courage and immerse yourself in the Word of God. And I can promise you that you will become stronger and more courageous for the Lord. Another duty of a soldier is to be alert. If you are not paying attention, your enemy can sneak up on you and destroy you. The same thing is true for a Christian soldier. If you keep your head buried in the sand and you only look up long enough to eat and work, you are making yourself weak and you're not helping the kingdom of God. When we fail to listen to what is going on around us and we choose to stay ignorant, sin can sneak in the back door of our lives and also into the church. Jesus gives us some great advice. He says in Mark 14, verse 38, Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. As good soldiers, we must pay attention to our surroundings and renew our strength by praying to God. As Paul said in 2 Corinthians 13, 5, Examine yourself as to whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Not only do we need to remain alert for ourselves, we need to remain alert for our congregation because when Christians stop paying attention, false doctrine can enter the church. You must understand that false teachings don't happen overnight. It is a gradual process that flies under the radar. Notice how Paul points this out to the Ephesian elders in Acts 20 starting in verse 28. Therefore take heed to yourselves and to all the flock, among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers, to shepherd the church of God which he purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departure savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Also from among yourselves men will rise up, speaking perverse things, to draw away the disciples after themselves. Therefore watch and remember that for three years I did not cease to warn everyone night and day with tears. If you have not been paying attention to your life or what's going on around you, 
Start paying attention because if you don't, it could lead you to sin and corruption. And it could also cause the church to become corrupted without you even knowing it. I have seen this happen in several congregations that are within 100 miles of our congregation. In fact, one church documented the changes they went through as they added one thing after another. And it just took eight years for that particular church to move far away from God's truth. So keep your eyes and your ears open at all times. I want to look at one last duty of a soldier. A soldier must be a positive influence on his fellow soldiers because if he is scared and full of doubt, he can pass his doubt and fear on to the other soldiers. But if he is confident and courageous, he can pass that on to his fellow soldiers as well. Don't ever underestimate the influence you have on others. The same thing is true when it comes to the Lord's army. We must encourage one another and build each other up. When we do this, we'll make each other stronger and more confident in the Lord. However, if someone starts sowing discord or starts bringing people down, it will weaken the Lord's army. And the Lord cannot use soldiers that have lost their trust in God or who are entangled in useless arguments. If a Christian starts sowing discord or starts causing problems, they need to be dealt with because just like one rotten apple can make a whole barrel full turn rotten, so can Christian soldiers who are negative and they begin to influence all the other soldiers. You know, left alone, they can in influence the whole congregation and bring the, the work of the church to a halt. Usually a person that does something like this has some sin in his life. Instead of dealing with this sin, he wants to bring everyone else down to his level by trying to get other Christians to accept his sin as being acceptable. If they don't, he will do his best to cause division in the Lord's army. As the writer of Proverbs says, Proverbs 6 verse 14, Perversity is in his heart. He devises evil continually. He sows discord. So as a Christian soldier, always do your best to be a positive influence on your fellow soldiers in Christ. And don't ever allow a fellow soldier to sow discord for very long or else he or she could divide the church or negatively influence the other soldiers in Christ, which would bring the work of the church to a halt. As we have learned in this lesson, there are many similarities between being in a regular army and being in the Lord's army. Of course, being in the Lord's army is far greater because we are fighting for God Almighty and for the salvation of our souls. I hope if you have been struggling with any of these things I've covered in this lesson, that you'll make the effort to make the necessary changes in your life so that you can be a faithful Christian soldier for the Lord. I want to finish my lesson with the words of Paul in Ephesians 6, verse number 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayers and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Hope you found this lesson helpful. No matter what lesson I preach, I want you to test what I say or any person says about God's Word by comparing what is being said to the Bible. Don't ever be lazy in this area because it is too important to simply trust in what a man is saying because we are all human and we're capable of being wrong. One thing we know for sure is that God's Word will not lead us astray, so we can always trust in it. As Psalm 146.3 says, Do not put your trust in princes, nor in a son of man, in whom there is no help. Psalm 18, verse 30, As for God, His way is perfect. The Word of the Lord is proven. He is a shield to all who trust in Him. 
I will always do my best to preach the truth, but I hope if you catch me teaching error that you will contact me so that we can discuss the matter. If you would like to learn more about LG Ministry and the congregation I preach at, feel free to visit our website at lgchurchofchrist.com. On our website, you will find a lot of material that can help you with your spiritual growth. On our main page, you will find an online correspondence course that you can take that will walk you through the basics. On our sermon page, you will find just about every sermon I've preached at my local congregation. You will also find some audio sermons and Bible class materials that you are free to study and use. On our article page, you will find tracts that you can read and print off and articles that have been written for our local paper. Finally, on our video page, you'll find our new video lessons like the one that you're watching now. I know we live in a fast-paced world where it seems like we don't have time to do much of anything. But I want to encourage you to find time out of each day to sit down and to study God's Word. Life is great and there's nothing wrong with being busy, but we must be careful that we don't get to the point where we get so busy that we fail to take time to feed ourselves spiritually from God's Word. We must remember that God is supposed to be our number one priority. If you find my lessons to be helpful, be sure and tell people about our program so that others can hear sound lessons from the Bible. I hope you have a blessed day.